Dr. Morgan Job seems to bring out the extremes in the majority of people. You either like him or dislike him. One thing you do is respect him, and that is perhaps what he values most of all. An intelligent assessment of a man and his beliefs. The outspoken parliamentarian, Dr. Morgan Job. Born in Zion Hill, Bell Garden, Tobago, on April 2nd, 1942, to Oban and Elvira Job, Morgan was the first of his parents' 12 children. As a boy, he was educated at Bell Garden EC School, St. Elizabeth's College in Roxborough, Bishop's Anstey High School in Scarborough, and Queen's Royal College in Port of Spain, from which he graduated in 1961. A year later, he was amongst the first batch of students to enroll at the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture, the forerunner to the University of the West Indies at St. Augustine. By 1965, Morgan Job had gained a BSc with honors in agriculture and was contemplating his next move. The previous year, 1964, the country's first prime minister, Dr. Eric Williams, had visited Africa and promised aid to the continent. Morgan Job's interest in the ancestral land was further piqued. In 1965, he journeyed to Tanzania and worked there until 1966, imparting knowledge to the nomadic farmers in an attempt to convert them from slash and burn farming to conventional farming techniques. For him, this African experience was seminal. When I went there as a, as a young man in my early 20s, I had already read most of the books available in Trinidad about Africa. So I didn't go down there naive and feeling like going back to my homeland. I was fully possessed of the knowledge of the vast congeries of peoples and problems that would manifest themselves as Congo in 1965. You know when Sparrow sang, I ain't really Congo man, he better than me, I could have shaky hands. He eat until his stomach upset, and I, I never eat a white meat yet. Anarchy, chaos, that comes out of a background that is so uh, dysfunctional in the sense of a modern state. And we in Trinidad, we don't understand that. So that's one of the things I learned there. The following year, 1967, Morgan Job was on the move again, this time heading to Brazil, where he worked mainly in the federal district of Brasilia for eight months advising on tropical agricultural systems. I think staying in Brazil for almost a year told me more about Trinidad and the problems that we have in Trinidad than I could get from reading a thousand volumes. So I'd say that more Trinidadians should go to Brazil and visit Brazil, especially because of the way Brazilian music and the samba, the, the soccer, the football, all those, all those rhythms, uh, and how all Brazilians embrace their, their football heroes like Pelé and, and, and uh, Gerson and, and Amarildo and, and those people. They are real national heroes down there, but, but by everybody. And we, we can learn a lot from, from what has happened in Brazil. Brazil is now one of the, the, the up-and-coming stars in the economic pantheon of the, of the global economic sphere. And it pulls everybody up. It reminds me of the statement, a rising tide lifts all boats. And if you really want to help Trinidad and Tobago, everybody has to be concerned about Ghetto Trinidad, about what you do about Ghetto Trinidad, because it can't be that Sumat Gardens and Bayshore is going ahead and the rest of the people going down and they expect Trinidad to go anywhere. I think the Brazilians understand it very well, which, which is why the elites in Brazil have had this discussion with themselves concerning how do we increase access at the universities for the blacks and the lower classes who traditionally have been kept out. This is a dialogue that the whole Brazilian society is involved with, and it has redoubled to their benefit when they try to lift everybody up. The whole country goes forward. By 1970, Morgan had begun studies for a Master's of Science at Guelph University in Ontario, Canada. This advanced field of study led him to further professional acknowledgement, and by 1978, he had accepted a Rockefeller Foundation project to work in Kenya for a year as a research economist, advising farmers how to adopt new technologies. He has had an experience or a set of experiences that are quite unique. He grew up in Tobago, um, he left Tobago, he went to QRC, he went into UWI in the Faculty of Agriculture in its very early years. He left there, he's traveled all over Africa. He went to the United States to some of the really very good schools there and had an experience there. He's traveled through Latin America. Um, he has 
over the years developed his competence in a number of languages, particularly I know for a fact in Spanish and so on. And he is very widely read. And I don't mean just for um, information sake, but he, he reads with understanding. He reads because that thirst for knowledge and understanding is not just to show off, to use his knowledge as ornament, although it might appear to some people sometimes when he makes references to a wide set of things that that is what he's doing. But what he's doing really very often is bringing his own experience and understanding of things to bear on an issue or a problem. Over the years, Morgan continued to travel, gaining and spreading his knowledge. He also worked at the Agriculture Ministry during interim periods, rising to the position of director in one of the ministry's divisions. In 1983, Morgan left Trinidad once more to pursue his PhD in economics from Purdue University in Indiana in the United States. His thesis focused on international trade and finance, technology adoption in agriculture and tropical agricultural systems in Costa Rica. Three years later, 1986, Morgan Job had gained the title Dr. Morgan Job. He returned to Trinidad and took up a position in the planning division of the Agriculture Ministry. Later that year, the National Alliance for Reconstruction swept into office and Dr. Job was appointed economic advisor to Prime Minister Arthur Ray Robinson. By 1991, the NAR had demitted office and the agricultural economists began lecturing at the University of the West Indies a career he held until 1997. There are two areas of his life that I think would have enriched him immensely. One is the fact that he was living at the, on campus at UWI uh, in company with many bright young people from around the Caribbean of different, virtually of different cultures. Uh, and different callings and so on. And he was able to learn and relate with these people a lot and it did impact on his personality. He became a more rounded person. And I think another area of his life, his experience that has enriched him is his stint in Africa where he was able to understand what African culture is all about, how it is different, uh, what some of the Afro-Trinidadians tend to think about Africa. You know, it's, he saw it as it was, and he was able to bring this to, his, to himself, to enrich his own personality and to share this information among Trinidadians as well. As much as his interest in agriculture had propelled him forward into significant pursuits, so too Dr. Job's path into mainstream politics was dramatic. In 1997, Former Prime Minister Arthur Robinson was appointed President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, causing his Tobago East seat to become available. Contesting the seat as an NAR candidate, Dr. Job won the runoff by election, thereby entering the Fifth Republican Parliament in 1997 and serving until 2000. During his parliamentary career, Dr. Job debated 24 bills, four motions, and was a member of the House of Representatives. Fortunately for me, because of my background and economics, because I uh, knew so much about so many other ministries, I was on almost every single cabinet subcommittee, whether it was the energy subcommittee, education, health, whatever it was. So I functioned in the cabinet, the, the committee that dealt with bills, that, that vetted them, I was on that committee. I chaired the Finance and General Purposes Committee for the last year and a half that I was there. So, so I was a very active member in, in running the cabinet and running this country. I, I never talked about that because it's not something you want to go boasting about. But I, I used the opportunity in Parliament to invest myself fully in, in taking the opportunity to do as much as I could, uh, in, including getting bills changed. Like in Tobago, incest is a big problem. But when I looked at the laws having to do with that, the sexual offences bill, I found it wanting. So I got the cabinet to agree that they need to change it to make women who knew that their lovers or their common-law husbands or even their, their husbands were abusing the children, that they become liable if the court could find out that they knew about this and did nothing about it. So that, that's just one instance. There's so many other things that I did, like starting that music program for children in Tobago uh, and, and in, in Trinidad here. In every department I was involved in, in helping to, to run the place. So, so that I, I thought that I enjoyed 
being in Parliament, enjoyed being in Cabinet. And um, I confirmed a lot of my suspicions about the, 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 the mediocrity that floats to the top, like effluent in, 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 in politics here. There's so many Cabinet members who sat around the table there for the period that I was there and said nothing. You know, they, they didn't even understand their own notes that came to the Cabinet. So very often I was the one to point out to a particular minister, you know, you, you, you can't let this note pass, you know. You better defer it and think more about this particular uh, paragraph. Because they, they didn't read the notes. You understand? They, besides myself, there were four people in the Cabinet who really got into the, the, the discussions about every other thing there. And the majority of the Cabinet were just, just sitting there silent all the time. In his first parliamentary term from May 15, 1997 to October 21st, 1999, he was Minister of Tobago Affairs in a government that came into office under a coalition agreement. And in his second term as MP from October 21st, 1999 to December 11, 2000, he retained the Minister of Tobago Affairs portfolio and was given an additional portfolio as a minister in the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Development. Most of the people in politics in the different parties are animated by the same vulgar imperatives, self-promotion. You listen to parliamentary debates. These people have no substance. I was there. I read the Hansard record before I went there. And a lot of the politicians are there for self-promotion. They're not there because they have risen to eminence through a meritocratic process. They're jobbing. They're jobbers. And especially when they're animated by their vulgar ethnic anxiety and exploiting the racism in the mass of the people. So that I don't really empathize with a distinct political party called UNC or PNM. I, I have pity for all of them. Uh, you know, I, I, I pity them. They're they, they simple-minded people mostly who are there exploiting the ignorance of the vulgar mob for their own particular performance. I don't think that I want to be part of that. He was not the ordinary type of parliamentarian. He, he was different in the sense that he did not pull any punches. He is the type of guy who would be fearless in what he says. Um, he, while he would have his allegiance to his political leader and political party, he still was um, intellectual and professional enough to call a speed a speed. And this is one of the great things about Dr. Morgan Joe. I would say that from the point of view of uh, understanding societies, sociological aspects of things, he has taken a deep interest in this. And because of that, he has read widely on history. It's very widely read on the history of all civilizations. I remember, you know, we used to have long discussions about the Bible because we grew up in a kind of age when you had to read the Bible. Your parents and grandparents would make you read it and so on. But we were always discussing things there. And of course, looking at it historically, looking at societies historically, discussing that, talking about that, thinking about the lessons we can learn from history. And every now and then, because I used to be a teacher of history, he would, he would raise some very serious questions with me about, uh, you know, what is history really about? What's good history? Um, are we really doing good history in this part of the world and so on? And um, that kind of abiding and eternal interest, genuine interest in getting deep understanding of things, through engagement with people. He doesn't just do this and go and sit somewhere quietly. He really wants to engage people all the time, as you know. And um, I think that, that, that is a, a unique kind of characteristic. Following his life in active politics, Dr. Job resumed his eclectic interests. At one stage in his career, he wrote at varying times for all three daily newspapers, was a television host of Enterprise in Trinidad at the former AVM television station, host of Tomorrow's Leaders on a CCN TV6, and a co-host of Morning Edition, also at TV6. However, it is talk show hosting on radio that has gained Dr. Job his widest interactive audience. At radio station Power 102 FM at present, he wakes up his audience during a 6 to 9 a.m. shift with his trademark outspoken opinions and remarks about current newsmaking events and issues. This side of Dr. Morgan Job is not a surprise to anyone who has heard him speak in Parliament, saw him on television, engaged with him on radio shows, and read his columns. His views are strong, his language at times acerbic, his capacity for debate unquestionable. It can be quickly observed that he does not suffer fools gladly.
If people could only understand that you have to have compassion and empathy for the downtrodden, for those who are not as lucky and as fortunate as I have been, that, that's, that's my mission. That makes me happy when I can share my knowledge, when I can explain that I read this book and you can learn this lesson from, from Shakespeare, The Merchant of Venice, Measure for Measure, or I could send you to Julio Cortazar or Pablo Neruda. Or, you know, I, I like doing that because I feel thereby I'm enhancing the quality of life and ennobling the space in which I, I live. He has continued with his classical music. I remember in the early years, um, how he would really spend hours practicing and he would always seek out the best tutor. A Carlisle Eversley, for example. And he would go through with them and really ensure that he understood fully what the music was about, how it developed, the different genres that existed, and would come to grips with it fully. Um, not just playing the instrument, but really understanding it. And, and because of that, he's, he became a passionate advocate for getting this kind of thing into schools for young people and so on. So what I'm saying is that there, there was a development there um, of a person who really saw that youth development, the development of young people, the development of a society, called for a broad set of competencies. The father of two girls, Zynga and Ziva, Dr. Morgan Job currently lives in Trinidad, continuing his journey of imparting knowledge. If he reaches 2, 22, or 2,002 people, it could be said that he would consider this worthwhile. The outspoken parliamentarian, Dr. Morgan Job. <laughs> Ba ta ba ta ya ma ma ya ma ma, ba ta ba ta ya ma ma ya ma ma.